Hi, this is Chris Nielsen with Breaking Up With Fear. I'm interviewing today Janice Page, and I've got a little glimpse into her life, and she's a busy woman, but uh, let's have Janice tell uh, us a little bit about herself. Okay, my name is Janice Page. As Chris said, um, I am a busy lady because I do not live in fear. I live in power. Um, so years ago, like 20 some years ago, I'm 50 plus, um, I took my life, I took control of my life. I came from an abusive relationship. I was in an abusive marriage. Um, I was intimidated. I was um, scared of everything um, because of the fear my ex-husband put in me. Um, and I was, in, I married him at 19, I stayed with him for six years because he, um, I was afraid of him. He threatened to kill me if I ever left him or wow. he just put a lot of fear in me. Um, so I was a very intimidated person because of that. So when I, um, I got strength enough to stand up to him, I had a very supportive family, um, very supportive, but I was always afraid that he would hurt me and them. So I stayed in that abusive relationship. That was a big part of fear for me. When I got out of that relationship, I um, it took me time to get my strength to re to move from fear. Mm -hmm. um, um, it took a lot of encouragement with from my family, a lot of um, will for me um, because I was always afraid of not just him but people in general. People in general, I had fear in everybody that crossed my path. You know they because I was a very intimidated person because of that. So when I say I broke up with fear, I broke up with fear. I can't, when I got my strength, I became fearless. Um, right. I became very powerful in my, in my, in myself, you know what I mean? So, um, it took, it took some years, Chris, it took some years. Um, and it took a lot of prayer. Um, my family praying for me. It took a lot of, um, self-talk it took a lot of boldness it took a lot and it took god me sitting still or knowing if i'm hearing from the lord um because i fear is a strong hole and it had a strong hold on me and it wasn't just in the abuse of relationship it was in if i can do this i i was fearful of stepping out um taking risks um, but believing that I, I, I can do anything, you know, I worked or at that particular time, I worked in retail. Mm -hmm. So, um, I thought that's all I could do. I didn't, I was fearful to go back to college, to go back to college because of my experience in school. And because of the negative conversations that I had with my ex, he would tell me that I would be nothing, that I couldn't be nothing without him. Just just that kind of stuff. So I had to do a lot of self-talk, a lot of educate myself because, you know, it starts here. Yeah. I had to deal with my mind. It was a mental thing um, because that's where it was at. You know, that's where the negative was at. I, even after leaving him, I still had to, I still had fear, still had that hold on me. Absolutely. So, when I, when I released that, it was probably five years to six years mm -hmm. after the divorce when that, when I was able to divorce fear as well. A lot I of that. divorced physical, huh? And you tell me, because I know a lot of people actually are experiencing what you experienced in the past and they would love to find a way out as well. What were, you talked about uh, your family as a support. You talked about prayer. Mm -hmm. You talked about um, your self-talk. Um, what, like for the self-talk, what were you saying to yourself before? And then what did you start saying to yourself? Well, before it was, I, before in the fear, I wasn't saying anything. I was just listening and believing. Believing so what I he was started, saying. Yeah. Huh? You were believing what he was saying then? Is that, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But myself talk, I started talking, my parents, my parents, like I said, I had a very supportive family. Um, they would tell me, you don't have to put up with this. My dad would say, I fought too hard for you not to even go through this. When they found out for a long time, they didn't know when they found out. Right. So they would just encourage me, let me know, you know, cause my parents, I've been together since I, I've been born. 
So um, they would tell me, you know, encourage me. You don't have to put up with this. He's going to kill you. You don't, don't, life is too short. You know, um, don't, the material things you can replace, we can't replace your life, you know. Yeah. So I would, um, you know, I would listen to that. And then my grandmother, she was a praying grandmother. She would give me scriptures. She would tell me, you know, read this verse. So I start in saying to myself, my self-talk was I'm valuable. Yes. I am valuable. Um, I am who God made me to be. You know, I am enough. You know, did stuff like that. Just encouraging myself. You know, that's the stuff I was saying to myself. And then when I would read the Bible, you know, it would be a confirmation, a confirmation that, you know, I am powerful. I'm God creation. I, he has no hold on me. The uh, fear has no hold on me. God does not live in fear, you know, that kind of stuff. And that was one of the things, even today, when, when I start feeling like I, I can't do something, I'm like, God, this is not God. God don't live in fear. He don't give me this, mm -hmm. you know, that's not of him. So I start acknowledging that. So one of the, my key words is God don't live in fear. So stuff like that, I was saying to myself, you know, I'm beautiful. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm capable of doing this. Just stuff like that. I was talking to myself, encouraging myself. You're educated. You can do this. There's nothing you can do. You can do all things in Christ to strengthen you. I mean, those are, that's the kind of conversation I was having. That's the kind of conversation I needed to have with myself. Right. Right. What, mm -hmm. what were you saying? Um, did, when you said that to yourself in the beginning, did you believe it? it was I halfway like it went a hundred percent belief no no but I still had a supporting family so I said it to myself and my family would confirm it you yeah. know and then you know I have I have little sisters under me so they looked up to me so I had to always um make sure that they I didn't want them to go through what I went through because they saw me you know what yeah. I mean so I had to start walking in it you know because I'm telling myself I halfway believe it and then my grandmother you know my family encouraging me my cousins and aunts you know once they found out what I was going through so and you know I, I start believing it but no you, not right away you know it's just like okay I'll, okay but then the the relationship with the Lord started getting stronger and closer so yes, I start believing it because I start having a relationship. So you know when you're you, I don't know about you, but my grandmother will always say, "I just pray that you have a relationship with the Lord." Well, you know we go to church. I've always been going to church, but I never had a relationship. So there's a difference. You yeah. know, you go to church. That's a routine. That's a you know you go to church, but a relationship. That's a whole different dynamic. You know what I mean? So when I start becoming having a relationship with Him. Yeah, I started, I started getting confident. I started getting bold. Fear started shedding off. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. You were, you were so blessed in so many ways to come through that. I think you can help so many people because of that. But you said something, too. Not everyone has that supportive family like you did. What would you say to someone who didn't have a supportive family like you had? To find a support group. Yeah. To find a support group. To find a group of ladies or, a, yeah that has been through it that can help you or if you go to church find an elder you know find an elder because my family i have a supported family but they didn't know right away they didn't know what i was going through right off it was i i didn't tell them because i was embarrassed you know right. i was embarrassed and keep in mind i was intimidated and he said if i ever said anything he would kill my my two sisters that's younger than me yeah. so those are my pride and joy i'm I'm trying to protect them. That's what I thought. Right. So they didn't know right away. But when they found out, my parents was like acting quickly. And so that's when, you know, I knew I had them, but I was afraid to tell them. Yeah. And so, so when you told fear. them, I bet you a lot of people are afraid to tell people what they're going through. What would you tell those people that are afraid to tell someone, you know, I'm struggling with something? What would you say to them? to tell somebody because there's nothing you've done wrong there's not because you they you're afraid to tell because you think oh what i've done they're going to judge me nobody's going to judge you people are going to give you help you need to tell someone because you're not only selling saving your life you're saving somebody's else life 
Mm -hmm. So yes, don't be afraid to tell, don't be embarrassed. There's nothing to be embarrassed about and nobody's going to judge you. That's what I tell them. Find a group, find someone you trust at your friend, a family member, a church member, or a group. Some, some people call, there was times in my life where I would call a total stranger, a 1-800 number, a total stranger. Mm -hmm. Find somebody. I love what you said, you know, sometimes we can't tell the people we love what's going on, but if we, we just get in the habit of even telling a total stranger, and if they give us a little bit of compassion and heart, then yes. it makes the next step a little bit easier. So thank, thank you for sharing that. Oh yeah, actually it does. And then it, that gives you a little power. That gives you some power. And then you know, if you can do that, then you're like, oh, I can do the next thing. You can, I can do the next thing. I never forget my mom when I did break away and I, I went to stay with my parents. And um, my ex would financially take care of me, but he would always bring like money and put it in my mom's damn mailbox. And my mom, I never forget, she told me, she said, and I would take it. She said, you'll never be free because you're still, you're still attached to him because of the money. You got to let it totally go. You got to release everything. You don't, you can replace that. And I was just like, you know, I'm, I'm like, wow. So I had to break away. So it's, it, all the attachments, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The phone calls, the, the money or whatever, you have to release all that because that's a stronghold. It's a stronghold and it, it keeps you tied to that person and that fear because fear is what, if I was fearless, I wouldn't have went through that. Right. And, and look, fear is everywhere and fear is our society is pumping out fear. And that's really mm -hmm. part of this, why I created this channel is inspired by people that are out there despite the fear that they're doing courageous things and also realizing that if I could bring down the level of fear, we could connect more with each other. Exactly. What, exactly. what, you know, what else would you like to, is there anything else you'd like to share around that particular story to people, people out there? Um, any lessons, yeah. other lessons? Exactly. So this was years ago. I have forgiven that person. Um, Ooh, I love that. So yes. tell, actually, let's go into that for a second. So tell us, how did you get to a place of forgiveness for this person? It, development, personal development and growth, um, <laughs> for sure. Development, like I said, the relationship I had with the Lord. See, I couldn't go in the, I couldn't go to the next phase. I can get so far. Mm -hmm. And then when I, I, when I wanted to really go and thrive in my life, I had to forgive him because that forgiveness can, is a part of fear and it holds you back. It's another, um, what I'm looking for, a bound, a bondage, bondage that holds you back, yeah. forgiveness. So what I did is I had to forgive him and I had to let him know that I forgave him and that I no longer feared him. So if he ever threatened me or come, came near me, um, I wouldn't be afraid of him. You know, I wasn't going to be afraid of him. So that's what I had to do. Forgive him. I love that you said that. I mean, whenever I've forgiven someone, it's actually released energy and I felt lighter and better uh, for me. So, I mean, I, yeah. I think forgiveness is our, for ourselves. And I love that you were able to do that and in the, and how you did that. Um, any other fear stories you'd like to share or even just what's going on today? Would you like to talk about that at all? Or what's, where would you like to, to go from here yeah i um so yeah what what's going on today is it's all driven by fear fear of um fear on all levels um and it's just that we there's enough love and enough life for everybody you know what i mean no one's going to take nothing from you what is meant for you is meant for you you know what i mean I do. we all can share the same dream all can live the same life and actually thrive a lot better. I agree with a you. A lot better. Yeah. You know, one of the questions I actually ask myself, because I believe that we're programmed, I think part of the, the problem with this is we're programmed in scarcity. And, uh, in, and I ask myself a question because I've been programmed in scarcity. And my mm -hmm. scarce program uh, pops up occasionally. And what I ask myself is, am I coming from, am I coming from scarcity or abundance? Mm -hmm. And then I get to choose. Scarcity feels contracting, fearful, closing off, and abundance feels opening and connecting. So now I get to make that choice. And 
Yeah, I love I love your analysis there. Yeah, and I like that you get to make the choice because you know what? At the end of the day, if you're a believer, we're gonna end in the same spot. We're gonna sit. We're gonna be at the same table before the Lord. We're gonna, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, we're gonna we're gonna end up in heaven if you're a believer, and we are, and it's gonna be a different picture. So I I just like to I like to treat people as what they always say. You never know the angel you're serving. Mm. So I never know who I'm serving because you know we they, we we are, you never know who you're serving. You know they it was a story a long time ago. They would say when you go to church, um, the pastor would say that you don't own a pew. You know they said don't sit here. That's my seat. Don't sit here. That's my seat. But then you just you you just ask Jesus to go away because he was the one that wanted to sit next to you. You know what I mean? So wow. you never know who you're serving or who's watching you. It could be that angel that you pray for and ask God to send your way. It could be the person that's going to bless you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I um why why choose to live and treat that person different or to live in fear because you're missing out on your blessing. Yeah, we're missing out. We're blocking our blessings when we do that. I, I like that blo we're blocking our blessings when we don't embrace whatever is coming to us. Don't accept what is. I love what you're saying. Um, from I, now I wanted to say this. So I got a glimpse of a Janice's shop before you're in your shop right now, actually out serving people right now. Um, mm -hmm. Busy woman. Do you want to tell some of the things you're doing and how you got to that place? Yes. So I have a healthy smoothie bar. So I serve the community in Coppell. It's Coppell, Texas. Um, we serve them and people in the surrounding areas. Um, I do a personal um, fitness class on Zoom because we had to pivot to Zoom because of um, COVID. Well, tell so, us, um, how is that going? You know, I can see that you're strong there. Um, it's going well. I have Monday through Thursday, at six to six forty-five class. I have, um, which is an international group. I teach an international group online. Yes, yeah. love it. Yes, global. So um, I do that from six to six forty-five, and then at Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday from eight to eight forty-five, I teach an, an another class. It's more of an advanced class. Teach another class, but it's it's amazing because they are um, it's growing. It's steady growing. People are steady telling other people about me. And I'm loving it because it's my, I'm in my purpose. I'm working in my purpose. Right. Yeah. So I love it. I, short story, um, worked in corporate America for a long time as a project manager. I knew that that was not my, I wasn't going to retire from corporate America. Not like typical people. I just knew it. Um, I just start asking God to, to, you know, push me into my purpose, which I've always done this part time. And um, five years after asking him that, I, retired i took a package i asked at&t they was offering a package i was like you can put my name on the package i'm okay with it and they, I, they weren't gonna lay me off but i i said i'm okay with being laid off because i was building this out and mm -hmm. didn't even know how it was gonna work it chris yeah. i was building this out saying lord i don't know how i'm gonna work my club because i still got a full-time job right yeah <laughs> that i was i told you i was a bold i was just like I'm going to do this. This is my purpose. And I did, but 10 days after I let, I got, well, my release date, 10 days later, I opened this club, but I was building it out the whole time, not knowing that if they, if they was going to let me get laid off, mm -hmm. not knowing that I just kept saying, cause I worked remote three days out of week. I just kept saying, I'm going to be here for three days out of week. And We'll figure out the rest. So I just standing, I was, I knew God was going to give, bless me with my dream, but I just did it as if it was going to happen, Chris. That's bold right there. You know what I mean? You, you Yeah. You went from uh, fearful about a lot of things to very bold individual. Yes. Oh, yes. How does it, yes. Fe how does it feel to be that bold? It, it feels amazing. I'm just like, and then I, it, it feels amazing. I'm like, what else can I be bold about? <laughs> yeah, what else can I be bold right. about? So you're, you're building your bold muscles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, what else? What? My husband laughed at me, but it, it, it feels amazing to be bold and to yeah. do it. And just, uh, it's because it's, I mean, it's life. You got to take chances. 
Yeah, you're inspiring me. I love your boldness. Um, I love your attitude. The You can feel this warm energy, positive energy in your voice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank well, you. So, so this is where I'm at. Capel, Texas, Fit Hub, Healthy Smoothie Bar, Healthy Vibe, um, online training. If you want to join any of my training class, just hit me up on Facebook, Je Janice Page. Um, I'm on um, Instagram as Vegan Lifestyle, Lifestyle, and then um, I uh, what I was gonna say. I have an awesome podcast. It's called Get Ready for the Dress, and Get Ready for the Dress means getting ready for anything you're dealing with in life. Whatever you're dealing with, it's a dress that you need to get ready for. Um, and it's just really to talk about what I. It's really just to encourage on all levels you know help ladies or men get ready for whatever they're dealing with they're facing it could be a divorce it could be just being single it could, anything you're dealing with we're, we're here to get you ready for it mm -hmm. well, i love that i love your positive energy i'd say go see uh, janice uh if you're near her um even online connect with her uh just that energy your, your energy and boldness and um love of life is contagious and i hope lots of people catch that versus this, this fear <laughs> that's going around and the disease and all that other stuff yeah. yes it, we we you are doing an amazing job i want to thank you for inviting me to your um youtube channel and keep it up because people need this we they need this we need everything that's out there you know what i mean because we um Life is too, too short. Not only that, I always tell people, it takes a village. It takes a village to do everything. It takes a village to live. It takes a village to wake, raise a child. It takes a village to do everything. You have to have a diverse group of people because you can't get everything you need in one group. I love that. So, and, and it does, I mean, we're here where we're here because we worked together. And yeah. uh, I hope more people work together, come together, play together, support each other. And, and thank you for supporting all the people that hopefully listen to this and um, get your positive energy and vibe and it rubs off on them and, and they be more bold. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for the invite as well. Absolutely, Janice. I, I would invite you back again. You, I'm what? sure you have many more stories you can share with our audience. Oh gosh, I've been here 53 years, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You are awesome. Thank you so much for sharing this positive energy and we'll make this a wrap. I'll hit stop in the record.